We're in some of the most spectacular country. It's gonna be interesting. They're just so majestic looking when they're standing on a ridge and just looking over top of everything. Not just if you're a hunter, but everybody makes an opportunity to get to a place like this. We'll be well rewarded by putting in a few hard miles and the views, the wildlife, and just the beauty of this place. She's like 20 yards, 10 yards. One of the first things I like to do in the morning as soon as I get up and out of the tent is I don't walk out without my binoculars because overnight anything could have moved in and be within 100 yards of your tent. The last thing you want to do is find a big goat or a big ram or a moose that is just, you know, that 100 yards away and first thing that happens is that you spook it. So I like to take the time and make sure that there's nothing nearby before moving around camp and cooking breakfast and packing up. It's been a bit of a tough morning glassing. You know, the advantage of being up high most times is a disadvantage at the moment. You know, with these clouds rolling in and out and giving a sporadic area to glass. So this is probably a day where you want to be down a little bit lower in the valley and be looking up, but that's not our situation right now. And to climb down into the valley is going to be steep and wet and icy so what we're kind of hoping for is that these clouds pick up a bit and we can see more country from where we are. It's always amazing to me to see how fast the animals that live in these mountains move in comparison to us. And it makes me feel so inferior, but yet it's so beautiful to watch. taking that older Billy, even if that younger one, you know, is better. That older Billy's the one to take. I think what we need to do is pack our bags up and kind of head back the way we came. And we'll go up the mountain behind the ridge as much as we can. They're still there. We're gonna have to take our time because we're fully exposed right now and they can see us from here. We will have to be so quiet, so slow, and so careful. Mm -hmm. 
got to be really careful guys. Everything on this side of the mountain just wants to fall away. The rock is crumbly, we just have to take our time and pick our way through it. Because we don't want to be on the other side exposed to those goats. a little bit more so we have some background behind us. Either scenario is not great, but we just have to take the best option of the two. Ah, ptarmigan. That's never good. They're still there, guys, nice and slow. We're getting there. Awesome work, guys. Awesome stock. All three of us exposed for, that had to have been 500 meters. And there he is. So we've got this nanny and this kid behind me, 100 yards away. You know, these animals are spectacular. They're one of my favorite animals to hunt. A good, you know, mature billy. They're just so majestic looking when they're standing on a ridge and just looking over top of everything. Right now you can see that they're starting to get a heavy coat. That little kid looks like a puffball. Mid-September and winter's just around the corner. That's what for you. these times after the hunt that you're up in the mountains that I find some of the most enjoyment not because uh, I've harvested an animal but because now I take the time to 
really look at the beauty and the place that we call home, the Yukon. And it's really an unbelievably spectacular place. And everybody, not just if you're a hunter, but everybody that gets an opportunity or that makes an opportunity to get to a place like this will be well rewarded by putting in a few hard miles and the views, the wildlife, and just the beauty of this place. So we have a bit of a journey ahead of us, but every step of the way is definitely gonna be worth it.